So hello and welcome. We're back out again. I'm back at a place I was at beginning of the year or last year or whenever it was, uh, Hunstanton. Now last time I was here, if you want to watch the video, check it out, but come back to this one or watch this one first and go and watch that one. I got rained off on uh, my long exposure and uh, I thought I'd come back and have another go. Now, when we got here this morning, the parkings, there's no parking between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. So we've run in a bit late. We came down, the parking the tent was actually there at half past seven this morning. So we had to drive on by and uh, come round again. So we had breakfast and then we ended up coming back down. So we're running a little bit later, but the tide was in, so I left it. And we just got our gear on, started walking down to the beach, thinking I can follow the tide out and I can see all the breakwaters and the tide's going out. So I've got a bit of a spurt on to try and get back down there now. I need to get right to the end of the beach. Let's see, if you did watch the last video, you'll know that the best one, the best groins for what I want to try and get are at the end of the beach. So we've got zigzag groins. That's what it's all about. I'm going to do some long exposures, put the six stop on, the ten stop on. It's really grey, which is absolutely perfect conditions for long exposure, black and white images. It's going to be brilliant. Then we're going to have a walk down to like the, the stumpy rocks, and then we're going to go down to the shipwreck and see what we can make with that. But I'm going to try and do black and white long exposures today. That's the plan. So stick around, see how we get on. And I'll talk to you when I get to the end and I might even have to get set up really quick and get a couple of shots in the bag you see? before we do anything. Like, like I say, the tide's going out and the tide waits for nobody. So I'll see you later on. So the last time I was down there, none of these amusements were open. It was definitely out of season, which is why I had no problems with parking. And if you do remember the last video, I was hiding underneath that bit where the arcades were behind me, trying to shelter from the rain, it was that bad. <laughs> so it's definitely a different place uh, in holiday season. There's a long walk to do, this is a lot of walking. We've got to really get our move on because the tide's going out so fast now. And I'm not even sure we're going to make it and I'll be guided if we don't. Oh well, we'll see what we can do. We're nearly there. We're at uh, groin number 17 and we've got the last two. There is a little bit of water left around the last one. So I might just get kind of a shot that I'm hoping to, but it's definitely not the shot I wanted. Absolutely gutted, I left it. We had breakfast and we just stalled just a little bit too long. Maybe half an hour, three quarters of an hour. Should never hang around, should I? Should never chill out in the van. Just get up, get out and get out and do it. Oh well, another lesson learned means I've got to come back again. But if I do come back, I'm coming out of season. <laughs> that is for sure. Right, I'm going to do a really quick one. I'm going to get the camera out. Probably F8, F11, long exposure. Put the 10 stop on, just hit it and nail it straight away. Get the last couple of groins just as they're coming out of the water and then I'll switch you back on and just quickly show you what it is I'm doing. But I can't do that before. I'm gonna to have to wait till after because you've only got the last three or four tiers of, war of uh, groin underwater and that's it. So fingers crossed we can get something. I, was, I just wanna show you a long exposure and I wanna blend the sky in as well. So it's a real minimal shot. That's what I wanna try and show you, but I don't know whether I can do it. Number 19, the date of my birthday. So let's see how we get on with this one. Oh, fingers crossed I can get something, otherwise I'm going to look stupid again. <laughs> I think I managed to get it. I think I managed to get a little bit of the groins and the water flowing across them. I've just had to rush down here, set my tripod up, put my 10 stop filter on, which is on the front of the camera now. And uh, yeah, the polarizer's on there as well, because it's just making that graze a bit deeper. So I've up the highlights. Sorry, no, I haven't up that. I've up my exposure to make sure my exposure is pushing towards the right hand side, so it's towards the lights. And now I'm just gonna move around here and get two or three shots of the water around. I'm just gonna check that. Hopefully that's on 30 seconds. Is it light enough? It's quite dark. It's quite dark, so I'm gonna to have to, I'm gonna increase. No, I'm not, I'm gonna increase. I'm gonna put my camera onto timer mode and I'm gonna adjust my speed accordingly. So I wanna keep F11 and I wind my shutter speed right down. On the Fuji, it's brilliant. You can put it into timer mode and then you can just keep spinning the uh, exposure. Let's put it on for 40 seconds. Let's try that because the tide's going out. So I'm just going to take a few shots of the same, the same style image. I've got the groins from the uh, bottom left hand side leading you out. I've got the marker point 19 and I like to keep 19 on there because that's my birth date, uh, 19. So I'm going to keep that on there. Now the beauty is from this position I'm on, I've got a little marker key out there. You can see a marker key, that's where the pontoon comes down, the slipway, and that's going to fill up the little gap over on the left-hand side of the image. 
So this is definitely one of the best groins to get and it's a lot deeper sunken into the sand. This is why this one at number 19 is one of the best ones to use. And I only worked that out by being down here last time and I spent the whole day down here walking up and down trying to work it out. Now again, that's still quite dark, so I'm going to up my exposure to a minute now and I go for a minute long exposure, so that's a massive long time. And there's a boat going in. How weird is this? Look at this. That is a well cool thing. Amphibian. Look at that. Babe, look at that over your shoulder. Look at this amphibian going in the water. That is so cool. It's got propellers on the front and great big wheels. That's amazing. I'm so glad I'm down here to see that going in. How brilliant, how brilliant is that? It's obviously for pleasure cruises or something. Is he going to go in? Go on, go for it. I want to see you go in the water. Maybe he's not going in just yet, or maybe he is, I don't know. Go on, go on, go on, go for it. Ah, oh, he's coming back. He's obviously waiting for pleasure cruises and he's going to drive in. And here comes another one. Wicked. Absolutely wicked. Oh, he is, he's going in forward first. Yeah, of course he is, because that's the bow. Hey, how's my exposure doing? Let's check my exposure while you're watching that. Let's have a look. That's a little bit better. Let's go even longer. Let's go up to a two minute exposure and let this boat go first. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's manic. How cool is that? It's a shame I can't get a quick shot of that. What about on my phone? Get a quick shot on my phone. There it is. Phone shot. Just as he comes to the end of the groin. Yes, man! <laughs> Wicked. Wide angle. Yeah, nice. Rule of thirds again. Boat going in. Yeah, I like that. And it's the other guy going in. Let's have one of him as well on my phone. Rule of thirds, bang. Lift the exposure up higher. Rule of thirds, bang. Yeah, every time. Make sure you use them rules of thirds and stuff like that. That's so cool. I want one of them. Imagine that as a camper van. Imagine that as a camper van. Imagine one of them as a camper van. You could drive down, just creep onto the beach, pootle around, go down to the next port and get off. Planning for the future big plan for the future. Here's the wife. What's the wife on? Are you overexposing, dear? She's looking straight down the groins, going higher. Look at this. She likes her little carbon fibre KNF. Nice and lightweight. But yeah, what a great place to come. This is a really, really interesting groins. I've got another 42 seconds to go on mine, going for a two minute exposure. And those boats have gone right down the beach now, all the way down there, just heading along the beach. <laughs> they are really good. Really cool. So you know I like to give hints and tips and stuff like that. One of my hints and tips really for this sort of thing is, when you look at the bottom of my tripod, uh, which is down here, I've actually pushed the foot of the tripod there, pushed the feet of the tripod right into the sand. Yeah, so all three of my feet of the tripod are, are buried. Where's this one? Down there somewhere. Yeah, are buried into the sand. So that means that my tripod's got little chance of moving. So it's pushed right down as far as it'll go until it stops. And that's making it as solid as it possibly can for doing these long exposures. Now there is a slight breeze coming across. There's not enough to flap my coat around, but there is a breeze coming across from our right hand side. Um, again, I've got another two minute exposure. I've come a little bit further across now because the tide's getting to the end of them and I'm losing that composition that I wanted to get. There's no chance of going up further because I think they're all pretty much the same. Uh, I may, well, I may walk up to the next one just out of interest, but I'm stick, probably sticking with number 19. What I might do is go the other side of it, and I want to do maybe a cryptic, uh, a cryptic long exposure. So I'll get one from the right-hand side, one from the left-hand side, and one centrally. Uh, so as soon as this one's done, I've got another 36 seconds to go. As soon as this one's done, I'm going to hop over the groin and try and get one from the other side, 
and then just do a bit of a cryptic of the three and I'll put all three of them up together. It's great for a wall hanging when you've got a big wall to put them on and I've got a new decorated wall to fill so this might be an interesting monochrome black and white image to put on the wall, especially if I can get three canvases to go together. Two landscape and one horizontal maybe. That would look pretty nice. Right, this one's nearly baked. We've got another 11 seconds, 10 seconds. It's counting down. Let's have a look. Are you ready for this? Let's have a look. Flip it round. Let's zoom you in on the back. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second. And there she is. Let's put her on. Put her on live view. There she is. What do you think of that? That's the starting image. That looks pretty epic, actually. I'm quite pleased with that. I'm just going to check the focus on it. And then, uh, yeah, on to the next one. So Denise is struggling at the moment. She's got an eight stop on there, but it's only giving her a second. And I'm not sure why. I think it's obviously the cheaper filters aren't working very well. So it's time that I get Denise a decent set of, of filters, I think. So yeah, if you're watching this, if you're KNF or Lee or Case or anyone like that, if you want to pass on a set of filters for the wife to use, please do. <laughs> right, I've got me left exposure. I've got me right exposure. And why Denise is quickly messing around. Can I get, quickly get one here? While she's messing around, trying to get her exposure right, I'm going to see if I can get one now this sand is a lot softer so I'm gonna to have to try and bury me tripod in the sand and I've lost you yeah I was talking to myself and I'm trying to bury the tripod in the sand now to get a, a center exposure and what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna go horizontal on this uh, and I have jumped in front of Denise but I know the tides going out and this would be nice for a wall hanging like I say if I can get them done so I'm gonna tilt the camera down try and get as much of it in as I can focus on that and I have to take me 10 stop off because I need to get me focusing right. So we're gonna go wide on this one. F11 again, keep it exactly the same. Go as wide as I can. I've not quite got the perfect straight line, but it's pretty good. I'm gonna tilt it down to make sure I get me zigzags coming across. My me me post is leaning, but it's leaning naturally anyway. So I'll have to live with that. So my first exposure then, I'm gonna get just in front of these groins where I'm close, take a shot of that. I haven't got as much water in this one because um, obviously the tide's going out and going out. And I could go up to the next leg, but I'm gonna try one here first. So, the two minutes going on. Spin me polarized around to make sure everything's gray. Let me just take another one without the, without the 10 stop. Take that, and then what I'll do is I'll flick it around to timer, which is my two minutes. That's that one done right. 10 stop goes on. Put me timer on for two minutes. Same exposure again, because it's exactly the same clouds, exactly the same light, exactly the same color, so it should be fine. So two minutes running on a vertical and hopefully this will give me one, two and a three in the middle. Fingers crossed. If not, I'm going to move forward and just jump to the next leg forward and try and get one. The water's rushing around that a little bit though, so the tripod's going to sink in a little bit further so it goes lower and lower. This is where I want my Benro, where I'm really, really high and get above them. Um, but yeah, so far so good. I'll show you a couple of images from last time as well, just to show you what I did last time. And I managed to get some okay shots, but these are what I wanted. I wanted the long exposure gray minimal black and white stuff so this is commitment for you um, I wanted to go a little bit higher and because I haven't got my big Benro I've sort of had to commit myself to trying to get a bit higher so I managed to perch my tripod on the edge of the groins and I've got myself in a position where I'm, I'm balancing on the top of these rocks now you know I've got no problems with me standing on things and standing on the edge of things but the wind is blowing sideways a little bit and it's making my feet a little bit wobbly trying to keep myself up now I can feel a tiny little bit of vibration through the tripod so this is one I'm going to have to check and make sure it's still sharp but the tide is going out now and there's hardly any water left on these last ones so I did get one shot vertical I'm just hoping this one's going to be slightly better again they will match up the three of them will blend together and it'll look really nice as a long monochrome images so yeah I'm still on pier 19 or jetty pontoon or groin 19 but yeah this is a little bit awkward balancing on a slippy seaweed groin but needs must when you've got to get the shot
So this is another one of those videos that was going to be nice and short and nice and easy and quick. But it's turned out that I'm down here, I'm shooting long exposures, I've just taken one of this little triangle pyramid thing. Now I've taken three shots, one with it on the left, one with it on the right, and one with it slap bang in the middle. I'm going to put all three on the screen now. Let me know which one you prefer in the comments and tell me if you like the one in the middle, the one on the right or the one on the left. Now what I'm going to do is I've just noticed there's this concrete pipe or something that's going out into the water. And again, it's making a really nice minimal shot. So it's going to lead us out to this marker point and I'm going to get myself in a position maybe a little bit lower this time and get these little concrete bollards breaking the water hedge and have this nice minimal shot with these nice little concrete things poking out the long exposure water. So this should work out actually pretty cool and I should be able to set my tripod on the concrete. So by doing that, by setting my tripod on the concrete, I should get a nice, solid, sturdy base this time. So like I say, this is what I'm doing. I've got my 10 stop here. It's a case uh, 10 stop and I've got it on my adapted ring. I'm just going to check to make sure my polarization is what I'm calling fully on because I want the grayness in the water. And now I've got the camera vertical. It's exactly lined up, almost exactly. Let me just tweak it just slightly. I want this to be bang central in the middle of the frame. Now I've got these gray pipes from the bottom. Now I'm aperture priority. I'm more than happy to shoot aperture priority. It's giving me 20 seconds at F11. I'm going to take a quick shot at that and this should make a lovely smoothed out water with these nice solid bollards. Then I'm going to get down a little bit lower and I'm going to shoot further across it giving me a lot more sky in the image because I want to see if I can build that dramatic grey moodiness in the sky. Because it's looking pretty fantastic for grey for um, you know black and white like I said earlier on. But the water's coming up near my feet and it looks pretty good. This is what we're looking at. You see down here you've got this nice concrete bollard pipe going out to this marker point there and a nice vertical shot should give me something else. You can see the sky up here is fantastic and there's the water just lipping around the edge down here, uh, you know, quite close to my feet. So if I can go up onto that, onto that next one, the water should be coming around me so everything should be great and I'll get down a little bit lower. I think we are quite possibly done. We've managed to get some long exposure shots. Denise has got very brave. She's gone down the edge there, standing over the water while it's been splashing over her ankles. And uh, yeah, I think, hopefully she's managed to get a good shot because uh, it's sometimes quite annoying when she gets a bit frustrated with the camera when it's not doing what he wants, she wants it to do. Uh, the sky is amazing. The sky is absolutely phenomenal at the moment. It's so dark and dramatic behind. Just look at the state of the sky there. Look at that. That is absolutely fantastic. I might take a, a wide shot just leading out into oblivion because I think that looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, I think we're done. I'm going to take that one last shot maybe of this really dramatic sky in the background and a nice long lead in line. And then we're going to head down and try and find something else. So stick around for the part two uh, at Hunt Stanton Beach. This is at groin, well, we've just passed groin 19 down at one end of the beach. And now we're going up the other end to find the shipwreck and some nice stones in the sea. So yeah, till next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Mrs. C wants a cup of coffee. I wouldn't mind a cup of coffee. See if we can find a nice cafe for a latte. Ciao for now, see you next time. Don't forget, get out and try some long exposures. 10 stop filter, F11, everything nice and sharp. Get your timer on, set your exposure to where you're getting everything's nice and crystal clear. And hopefully you'll end up with a couple of really nice long exposure shots. Best conditions to be out of these, gray sky, gray water, gray everything. See you soon.